to go to Texas so badly. Don't hate me for this, but I love country music and I've always wanted to go catfishing. So yes, Texas is 100% on my bucket list, but when I go, I think I'm gonna skip these places because they're like pure evil. I mean, it's in the title. Starting off our list today, we have the Texas Killing Fields. As the name implies, people died there. At least 30, but possibly more. This stretch of land that covers 25 acres is located just outside of Texas City. It is vast, barren, vacant, and apparently the perfect place to hide a body. Since the 1930s, many young women have gone missing in the area surrounding the fields. And while some remain missing to this day, many of the women's bodies have been found discarded in said fields. And the first discovery was made in 1984. A dog carried something its owner originally thought was a ball out of the field, but it turned out to be a human skull. And after that, the floodgates opened. Clyde Edwin Hendrick, John Robert King, Peter Zwarst, Kevin Edinson, Smith, and William Lewis Reese were all arrested and imprisoned for separate killings, except for King and Zwarst, who had worked together, meaning that only a total of four killings have been solved to date. The killers of the remaining victims, as well as the remaining victims' identities, remain unsolved to this day. Next up, we've got Alton Bridge, also known as Goatman Bridge, located between the Texas cities of Denton and Copper Canyon. The bridge was used from the 1930s all the way up to 2001 when it was closed for vehicle traffic. So yes, it's abandoned, but how has it earned itself a spot on our list today? Well, it's got a pretty dark past, which I will tell you about now. The legend goes that in August of 1938, a successful goat breeder who went by the name of Goatman, but whose real name was Oscar Washburn, hung a sign up on the bridge that read, This Way to the Goatman, which apparently severely pissed off a local radical hate group that I can't say the name of here on YouTube, but they wore white pointed hoods and they were terrible. Probably know who I'm talking about. Well, one of the members of that group took Washburn by force. They brought him to the Elton Bridge and ended his life. They threw him over the side of the bridge, but when they looked down to catch a glimpse of his body, he was nowhere to be found. Enraged, the group made their way to his home and killed his entire family. Since this alleged incident, many people have claimed on many separate occasions to have seen the ghost of Oscar Washburn leading his flock across the bridge in the middle of the night. Next up, we have the Baker Hotel in Mineral Wells, Texas, which is probably one of the most famously abandoned places in the state, according to the internet. Although it's no longer abandoned today, actually it's now a health spa, it was abandoned between the years of 1972 and 2019. The hotel opened its doors in 1929, welcoming people from all over who were attracted to this so-called crazy water with healing powers found in the town of Mineral Wells. Many spirits are said to haunt the hotel, including T.D. Baker, who died died in his room of unknown causes after his mistress flung herself from a seventh floor window. Another apparition who calls the hotel home is a bellhop who was cut in half during an elevator accident back in the 1950s. If you already have a fear of elevators, I'm so sorry, that's super gross. Another is a young man who died of leukemia while staying at the hotel. Reports of red lipstick smears appearing out of nowhere, broken glass, windows opening and shutting on their own along with legitimate ghost sightings continue to fascinate visitors of the area and the hotel, both in its abandoned and reopened opened state. Next up we have Stuart Mansion located in Galveston Island, Texas. This area has a rough history. Before the grounds became the resting place of the Stort Mansion, they had been the campsite of the Karankawa tribe, who were perhaps most well known for eating human flesh. The tribe was also killed on the land by John Lafitte's pirate colony in a gruesome battle. And if that's not bad enough, legend says that the father of the Stort family went mad and killed his wife and sons, and then allegedly buried them all inside the walls of the mansion before taking his own life shortly thereafter. Many people who visit the now abandoned attraction claim to see the ghosts of the Karankawa peoples along with the ghosts of deceased pirates as well as a voodoo priestess who many believe was a prisoner of the pirate colony and of course the ghosts of the storts who are said to walk the halls regretfully and mournfully. Next up at our halfway point today we have the USS Lexington, an Essex class aircraft carrier, say that five times fast, which during the second world war participated in almost every major operation in the Pacific theater which was kind of the Asia Pacific Wars, and it spent a total of 21 months in combat. As you can imagine, the massive 872 foot vessel has seen 
a lot of action in its day. But on its final day at sea, the vessel was hit by two torpedoes in its hull and it began to sink. 216 crewmen were killed and 2,735 were evacuated. In true naval fashion, the captain Felix Stump was the last to disembark the vessel. He did survive but died of cancer many years later. Thanks to fundraising efforts, the abandoned ship was eventually retrieved from the ocean floor and converted into a museum which has been referred to as the most haunted in America. It's said that anyone who enters the ship will feel the presence of those who died on board. Next on our list, we have the old Yorktown Memorial Hospital, which opened in 1951 and was abandoned in 1990, but eventually reopened many years later as a tourist attraction, meaning you can visit it if you want. While this is the case, many people believe that the hospital was never truly vacant, as even after its closure, it was home to the many ghosts that continue to roam its halls. In fact, the attraction is so haunted, it actually appeared numerous times on the reality television show Ghost Adventures. If you guys watch that, I don't know, let me know in the comments, I've never seen it. Perhaps the most famous story that outlines the horrors of the hospital would have to be the one detailing the incompetence of Dr. Leon Norwierski, who slipped a patient's throat while performing a procedure on their neck. Whether or not this was an accident is highly debated. Was he incompetent or was he malicious? I don't know. I always like to think incompetence, but. The ghost of the deceased patient is said to vengefully roam the halls of the former hospital. And the hospital is also home to a gaggle of ghost nuns who are super strict and they punish those wearing unacceptable hospital clothing and sporting tattoos by pushing, scratching, or forcing them out of the building. Next up, we have Presido Nuestra Señora de Loretta de Bahia, a fort whose name I will not be attempting to pronounce again, that was constructed in Texas by the Spanish army in 1747. And it's the site of the Goliad event, which took place during the Texas Revolution and resulted in the deaths of somewhere between 425 to 445 people. Those who died were Texian army soldiers, prisoners of war to the Mexican army. The hundreds of men were killed with projectiles, piled up, and set on fire. It's a pretty dark past, so it probably comes as no surprise that the area is obviously super haunted, but what might shock you is the fact that it isn't said to be haunted by any of the men, but rather a woman who lost her lover during the gruesome event. She wanders the grounds of the fort, helplessly searching the graves for a name that can't be found. Many who visit the grounds have also reported hearing cannon fire banging on the walls and the strong smell of BLOOD near the fort chapel's courtyard. I'm sorry you guys, I can't say these words on here. Next. Next up, we have a name I can definitely pronounce, Donkey Lady Bridge. We had Goatman and now we've got Donkey Lady. It's located 30 miles southwest of San Antonio and the bridge is said to be the final resting place of a woman who was raised by donkeys after being abandoned by her parents. In 2006, the San Antonio Express released an article recounting her story. It appears as though while out one day, one of the woman's donkeys bit a man's son. The father was furious and later ambushed the woman and her donkey on the bridge, causing her to fall in the the river and drowned. Many people have said that if you drive to the bridge today, turn off your car engine, you'll hear the cries of the woman and her donkey. If you have tried it, if you do try it, let me know. Starting off our top two, we have the Toya Ghost Town. At its peak in 1910, the town was home to a whopping 1,052 people. Not that much. But today, the number has dwindled down to just 57. This is possibly due to the 2004 tornado that devastated the town, leaving the majority of the homes and the volunteer fire department abandoned. While this might sound pretty basic, those who live in the town today tell of something pretty extraordinary. Dark, but extraordinary. Locals believe that the town is occupied by entities, young people, with pitch black eyes that go around the town at night, terrorizing its residents, knocking on doors and staring through windows, instilling fear into whoever might meet their gaze. It has been said that this is the true reason for the town's near total abandonment back in the early 2000s, but of course, I wanna know what you think. And finally, to finish off our list today, we have the former Williamson County Jail circa 1888. The jail was home to some of Texas's most notorious criminals, including Henry Lee Lucas, who claims to have taken the 
life of 35 people in the year 1982. It's a busy guy if he did it in just one year. The crime rate at the time was out of control, so much so that the jail became quickly overcrowded. So overcrowded, in fact, that it became incredibly easy for inmates to slip out of the prison undetected, only to continue their reign of terror on the Williamson County people. Luckily for the locals, the majority of escaped convicts were recaptured, unlucky for the convicts, as the majority of them were sentenced to death by lethal injection, electric chair, and the old rope and tree. But you guys know by now, I can't say that word on here. The jail was abandoned in 1971, but it later reopened as county offices, and it has been told that the deceased inmates now haunt the building, throwing binders and books from shelves and lunches off of desks. It seems like they're still kind of holding a bit of a grudge against the members of state. If you're feeling a bit disappointed at the fact that no, it's technically no longer abandoned, it once was though, so that's why it's on this list, I will give you some solace in knowing that the building is actually open for public tours during the fall season, so do with that what you will. Alright guys, you know the drill. Which one of these abandoned places would you most like to visit, and which one would you absolutely never go near, even if I paid you a million dollars? Which I won't, but let me know. I've been your host, Hannah Thompson, and I will see you in our next video. I don't know why I can't say Washburn. Which was the Asia Pacific uh, And there are Don't go in there if you're yatted up. I don't know why I said that. Um, okay. Presido Nuestra Señora de Loretta de Bahia. I feel like, you know Esteban from Sweet Life of Zach and Cody? <clears throat> the climate, the crime rate. <laughs>